Okay, so this is the mini sensor that we built for you folks. It's nine centimeters long and two and a half centimeters in diameter. And you can see here, this is the pressure port. So this is where the temperature compensated pressure sensor is. And then right at the center of mass in the middle of the sensor here, we have the high G plus minus 400 G accelerometer. And to turn the sensor on and off, we have this red bar here, that's the magnetic switch. So to turn that on and off, what you want to do is go ahead and just touch the magnet close to that switch. And you'll see this blue light will go on. It's just checking that everything is running properly. When everything is good, the sensor will then start recording data to the micro SD card and you'll see that uh, blinking blue light. When you're done with your experiments, same thing, you just take the same magnet, put it close to the switch, and it turns the sensor back off again. When you want to charge the battery or record data, you need to take off this end cap here, which has two mounting strings. We would recommend that you put your fishing line or whatever cable you have through these two mounting strings, just in case one of the strings breaks or comes loose, then you always have a backup just for safety that you don't lose the sensor. So to take it off, you don't need any special tools. You can just do it by hand. It just needs to be hand tight. Just unscrew it here. It pops right off. You can just use your thumb and gently push the sensor out. And then you can see here, there is this uh, four pin cable. And that's exactly the same cable and connection that you use with the fish sensor as well. So you go ahead and plug that in to charge it or also to retrieve the data where it just pops up on your computer like any normal uh, SD card does. One thing you might want to note is that uh, these O-rings can get dirty, especially if there's lots of sediment in the river. So just go ahead and keep your eye on them when you retrieve the data. If they look like there's some sand or grit built up, we'll go ahead and wipe that off with the paper towel and then um, make sure that it's nice and clean. Whoop, I keep turning it on here with the switch. <laughs> Close it up, and then once again, go ahead and screw it in hand tight. It doesn't need to be super tight, just needs to be tight enough that the O-ring is completely inside here. The O-ring is really what keeps it watertight. This lid here, um, it just screws on here. You don't need to have it very, very tight in order to have a good seal. What matters most to keep these sensors waterproof is just that the O-rings are clean and well lubricated, and when they're installed, they're clearly inside of the tube. All right, that's it.